In this presentation, we will identify and explain threats to professional ethics that auditors face in the film False Assurance. We will do this by playing two scenes from the film where we believe important threats are demonstrated. We will explain those threats and what the characters did in response to these threats and what the characters should have done. I will now play the first scene. It's no wonder. Have you seen this morning's announcement? They've had to postpone the launch again until September. The share price has taken a big hit. Really? When I caught up with him, he said he was tired of being interrogated. He asked me whether he could help with anything. And you asked him about Prem Intel? I'd been told the brother-in-law was still a director, but it turns out that he and Richard's sister divorced some time ago. Why didn't you talk to me first? I got assurances about this last year. You didn't know about the brother-in-law back then. I had to ask him. Not disclosing a family interest would be an integrity concern. So the issue's now closed? <sighs> Not quite. Did you see any reports last year? There are no copies on file. My interrogation has led to us receiving a pile of Prem Intel reports this morning, which are being reviewed. I've added an extra line in this management rep letter for Richard to confirm there's no continuing family interest in Prem Intel. Really? There's been a recent connection and Prem Intel's ownership is unclear. If there's no interest, he shouldn't have a problem. Are you sure you really needed that? With the launch being postponed again, he's going to be feeling a great deal of pressure. The first threat that we have identified from the scene is self-review. The Professional and Ethical Standard 1 states that a self-review threat is present when one professional relies solely on previous made judgment and will not appropriately accept results on that judgment made by another professional in the firm. This is evident through Patrick not wanting his previous work to be criticised with the potential that he may have missed something important in the audit for Prime Intel. If Sarah was to expose his mistake or the fact that he'd missed a major aspect, which would be key in an audit, Patrick fears his recent promotion could be in jeopardy. This self-review threat leads to Patrick warning Sarah to not share her findings or question Richard any further. This threat was enough for Sarah to not question his judgment and relied solely on the assurance that Richard had previously provided Patrick. This definitely should have been investigated further Sarah should have not consulted Patrick about her concerns and should have instead approached someone else who is not directly involved to limit the chance of any biased advice. By consulting with Patrick, he is then able to persuade her to not take any further action, which is unethical and goes against their duties as auditors. The second threat that can be seen from this clip is a self-interest threat. According to the Professional and Ethical Standard 1, it states that a this threat can occur when an auditor's judgment is influenced by factors such as fi a financial interest or their own motives and, and interests. So we know that Patrick was a longtime audit partner for D. Merton. And when he heard that, when he heard about the bad news about D. Merton's share price, he looked to be upset uh, as if he was personally affected by this. This could possibly mean that he might have either a financial or personal interest in the company. He might either be afraid that TYSL loses a client or he might have shares in the company. What should have been done is that he should have been rotated out with another audit partner to reduce a self-interest threat. This should have been done by TYSL or he should have suggested it himself. Regarding the two other possibilities, firstly, he should have disregarded any fears of losing a client because auditors work for the benefit of the public and if he does have any financial interest in the company, he should have distanced himself from the company to prevent a conflict of interest. The third threat that has been identified in the clip is the threat of familiarity. Familiarity threat occurs when there is a close relationship between an auditor and a client. According to the Professional Ethical Standard 1, when a familiarity threat occurs, the auditor may be too accepting of their work or become sympathetic towards the client. Patrick has been Richard's auditor for many years and this caused a familiarity relationship to form between the two. As Patrick trusted Richard's word with no evidence. When Sarah had gained the knowledge of that Richard's brother-in-law was the director of 
crime intel, she went and questioned Richard about it. But when Patrick went and told Sarah that since Richard told her and him that he was now ex-brother-in-law, she should believe him and leave it at that. This shows that there is a familiarity threat as Patrick is very accepting of Richard's words and does not follow proper requirements. Patrick should have allowed Sarah, Sarah to exercise the professional ethics of objectivity and skepticism and continue to follow up on the fact that he was an ex-brother-in-law. Now we're going to play the second scene. I thought you'd be happier. I've been uncomfortable since hearing about Richard signing off on two of the larger payments. It made me wonder about those payments he authorised to Prem Intel for reports used by Tom. But you satisfied yourself about the relationship with Prem Intel. And you got hold of all the reports and had them checked. And you got Richard to sign a rep letter confirming that there was no family link. I took it out. You said... It doesn't matter. He told us both there was no link and there was no evidence suggesting otherwise. But what if the bribes started earlier, were funded by payments to genuine suppliers? I think I should discuss this with Liz. Think carefully before doing that. If you point them in the direction of the relationship with Prem Intel and there's no problem, you'll be criticised for extending an expensive investigation. If it turns out there was a problem with those payments, then the next questions you're going to be asked are why you didn't realise they weren't genuine and why the rep letter didn't deal with the family connection. The fourth threat recognised from this clip is an advocacy threat. According to the Professional and Ethical Standard 1, an advocacy threat is present when an auditor promotes a client's position to the point where an auditor's activity is compromised. This threat is present when Patrick reassures Sarah that Richard can be trusted. This influences Sarah not to trust her own professional skepticism and compromises her objectivity as an assurance practitioner. Sarah is well within her responsibilities as an assurance practitioner and having professional skepticism. However, when she expresses her desire to consult Liz about Richard, Patrick proceeds to promote Richard's position by reassuring Sarah that she didn't need to do anything because Richard was trustworthy. Patrick has worked with Richard for years to establish a relationship with him. However, this gives rise to the familiarity threat mentioned before, which would naturally affect professional judgment. Patrick reminds Sarah that Richard told them both that there was no family link, nor that there was evidence to suggest otherwise. Furthermore, he also tells her to tread carefully because of the potential negative consequences for her reputation. Ultimately, Patrick coerces Sarah to give Richard the benefit of the doubt, which shows his own personal bias and promotes Richard to the point where Sarah's objectivity and professional judgment is compromised. The threat identified from the scene will be considered to be intimidation. According to PS1, PES1, intimidation occurs when a practitioner is pressured, which prevents them from acting upon their principal ethics. Sarah gets intimidated by Patrick as he says, regardless of the outcome, Sarah's professional um, ethics will be questioned, which will result in negative exposure for her and TYSL accountants. Um, with the conclusion of the movie, we can identify that CFO Alex helped expose the family links and bribery that took place within D. Merton. So we're able to assume that Sarah did not consult Liz, who is the Audit and Risk Committee Chair. Therefore, Patrick's comments prevents her from acting objectively. Sarah should have followed her instincts and consulted Liz about her concerns. Although to prevent such circumstances from happening again, this firm should take upon another order partner and ensure rotations are being carried out sufficiently without the influence of other partners. In conclusion, the threats that were identified in the film False Assurance were self-review, self-interest, familiarity, advocacy, and intimidation. The auditors did not act in the most professional way. They should aim to be more like Sam, who throughout the movie demonstrated the ideal characteristics of an auditor. She continuously demonstrated objectivity and professional skepticism. Here are our references, and thank you for listening.